The Oracle of Omaha has a reputation as the gentle goat of investing, but is there more to this than meets the eye? Is there something that is often overlooked? Or is this reputation warranted? Get it? Warren? Warranted? Anyway, let's begin. The story begins in 1942, when Warren Buffett bought his first shares at the age of just 11. This is the same year that his father Howard Buffett ran for the US House of Representatives in the Nebraska District. He won and became a member of Congress in 1943. Before this, Howard worked at a small stock brokerage firm. He was re-elected twice, however in 1952, he decided against seeking another term and returned to his investment business in Omaha, Buffett Falk & Co, where he worked until shortly before his death in 1964. But what about Warren Buffett? In 1951, after graduating from Columbia, where he was taught by Benjamin Graham, Buffett worked for three years at his father's firm as an investment salesman. In 1954, Buffett accepted a job at Benjamin Graham's partnership, working as a securities analyst. His starting salary? $12,000 per year, the equivalent of around $114,000 today. However, just two years later, Graham retired and Buffett started his own investment partnership. He went to his father's acquaintances to raise capital for his first fund. These were prominent families in Nebraska with big businesses and political connections. For example, across the street was the family whose son became the CEO of Coca-Cola. That family gave Warren $10,000 in the 50s. In 2012, the Stock Act, or the Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge Act, was signed into law. The law prohibits the use of non-public information for private profit, including insider trading by members of Congress and other government employees. Remember, Buffett's father was a congressman. The only people who were, before 2012, allowed to trade on insider information without having criminal charges brought against them were congressmen. Remember, Buffett's father was a stock market broker prior to being elected and going to Congress. Hence, he had a comprehensive knowledge of the stock market and clearly had an interest in it. After all, it was his father who taught Buffett the ropes early on and had him buy his first shares as an 11 year old. Imagine you are Warren Buffett, sitting on billions of dollars of cash, and the like button is an asset at a bargain bucket price after a recession. You know what to do. Now imagine you are Warren Buffett, and you can, number one, get insider information to trade on, number two, get a six figure position after college, number three, after a few years, set up your own fund, getting money from wealthy family friends, number four, pay no dividends to investors, and only put a hundred bucks of your own money into the fund. Number five, let the mathematics of compounding work its magic as you bring in more institutional money. Number six, become so connected politically and connected on Wall Street that you can get special deals, which have practically no risk as you know bailouts are coming. For example, in a 2008 crisis, Berkshire owned stock valued at more than $13 billion in the top recipients of the top funds, and Berkshire had at least twice as much dependence on bailed out banks as any other large investor. Leave him alone! Excuse me? Leave him alone! No. Number seven, remember how you aren't paying dividends to investors? Well, that means that you can stash up billions of dollars of cash and then sweep up cheap assets at a bargain when a recession inevitably hits. Number eight, be holier than thou, i.e. calling derivatives financial weapons of mass destruction, when, during the height of the 2008 crisis, Berkshire sold more than $2.5 billion worth of credit default swaps. Or, what about Buffett's reputation as the saviour in the Great Recession, when Berkshire is the majority owner of Moody's, who played a key role in inflating the crisis in 2008 via their questionable debt and derivative ratings, which inflated the mortgage and subprime market. Moving on, what about Buffett's status as the GOAT of investing? Well. Let's take a look at the following scenario. Every investor is in their prime and you've got 20 years guaranteed. Who have you got? Of course, there is only one correct answer. Billionaire Chamath Palabatia has even stated that Jeff Bezos is the best investor of our generation, not Warren Buffett. What's interesting about Amazon is people used to lambast Jeff Bezos for not being profitable. But when you looked under the hood, he was the single best investor of our generation, even better than Buffett, because he would take billions of dollars of free cash flow and invest it in the future. Buffett has missed out on an entire raft of tech, and Berkshire has underperformed the S&P 500 in recent years. As we can see, Berkshire's best years are found overwhelmingly 
in the period before the tech era. Also, he has been critical of Bitcoin, describing it as rat poison squared. Is Hillary going to win? Hillary's going to win. Yeah, I will bet money on it. I mean, yeah, you, you yeah, will yeah. Bet money. I don't do that easily. Anybody? Wrong. That is absolutely Wrong. proved over and over again. Wrong. Actual- Ultimately, Buffett is worth $73 billion. He doesn't need to have an in-depth understanding of new age tech. Also, Buffett has a huge stake in Finance 1.0. Why would he give props to Finance 2.0? Moreover, Bitcoin as a savings vehicle is misaligned with Berkshire's don't save your money, invest it in us, or consume more of the products of the businesses that we have a huge stake in, and is also misaligned with Berkshire's Cantillon insider advantages. It's worth noting that Howard Buffett strongly supported the gold standard because he believed it would limit the ability of government to inflate the money supply and spend beyond its means. Here is a direct quote from Howard. I warn you that politicians of both parties will oppose the restoration of gold, although they may outwardly seemingly favour it, unless you are willing to surrender your children and your country to galloping inflation, war and slavery, then this cause demands your support. For if human liberty is to survive in America, we must win the battle to restore honest money. There is no more important challenge facing us than this issue. The restoration of your freedom to secure gold in exchange for the fruits of your labours. His son Warren, however, hates gold. See the Cantillon effect as to why. Some have even argued that perfect success can be summarised by the following. First deals equals insider information. Last deals equals Cantillon effect. What are your thoughts? Is it true or false? For more compounded valuable content, subscribe and like.